Well, Steve, the good news is that all the players are coming to the table. In fact, they all met with Governor Walker earlier this week. Everyone was trying to buy one, two, or more of these, trying to make their dreams come true because, well, someone has to win, right? Well, they say they expect to be out here at least another two hours. As you can see, this big yellow hose behind me, they're actually having to pump in almost all of the water into the facility now because, uh, as the assistant chief, Dan Lipsky, just said, the plant has an inadequate water supply. So basically, they're having to pump in all of this water. But, you know, it is bone chilling cold out here. I can tell you just from standing out here for the little bit that I have uh, in, in a lot of the water, if it spills out of the hose, has been freezing. Firefighters are dealing with those issues. They're trying to rotate in and out as quickly as they can so they can warm up and properly fight this fire. But as the assistant chief told us just a few minutes ago, they do not have this fire under control yet. My favorite thing about the state fair coming up tonight at six, we'll show you some of the new rides and I'll tell you whether I was brave enough to try any of them out. Steve, I've got to know what is your favorite thing about the state fair? I got word less than five minutes ago that Glendale police have a suspect in custody. They tell me it was a high school student at Nicolay that has been arrested. Charges will be referred on to the DA's office. Currently, it is a balmy 29 degrees, but the feels like temperature more like 19. Live with reaction from Robinson supporters, Lacey. We're stopped now right in front of the Dane County Safety Building. Uh, if I step back out of the way, you can see they're uh, taking a moment for a prayer for Tony Robinson. Uh, before the decision was announced, uh, faith leaders from around the community met. Uh, as the decision was announced, everyone was huddled around cell phones uh, watching. Uh, as the decision came out, they said, well, this is the decision they expected. They're very disappointed uh, that this is uh, the decision. Of course, now friends, family, supporters, have gathered uh, in front of the house on Williamson Street on the 1100 block of Williamson Street and now we have marched all the way we're just uh, just a couple of blocks away from the Capitol they plan on marching around the Capitol and then to a church a uh, family members that uh, spoke earlier said they know that people want to demonstrate and they want to show their frustration but they're hoping they do it peacefully to remember Tony Robinson he will be missed terribly and there are a few words that I can put in to describe my feeling as to how he's being demonized. I would just like everybody to keep in mind that this was a 19-year-old kid whose life was cut short before he was able to fully realize his potential. And there's only a few people who really know how Andrea Irwin, how Tony Robinson's mother feels right now. One of those people, Maria Hamilton. She is marching along with Andrea right now. I talked to her earlier about how she's giving the Robinson family support. We speak daily. Uh, I talked with her uh, a couple of times this morning uh, to find out um, what she needed from me, what she wanted me to do, and she just wanted me to be here with her. And the Young, Black, and Gifted group is calling for a day of action tomorrow that begins at 9 a.m. Of course, we'll be covering all of it live for you. Reporting live in Madison, Lacey Chris, today's TMJ4. Yeah, we're not showing you the protesters right now. They're holding signs with vulgar language. But I can tell you, earlier in the day, police warned protesters they needed to have the streets cleared by 3 o'clock. Then shortly after 3 o'clock, police came out and they said move or they would start arresting people. One by one, police surrounded protesters at the corner of Doty and Carroll in front of the Dane County Safety Building and arrested them. Black Lives Matter! Earlier in the day, police gave protesters a 3 o'clock deadline to leave the intersection. Just after 3 o'clock, police ordered everyone out of the streets or they would be removed. That's when the arrest began. I spoke with Madison Police Chief Michael Colville before the arrest. He told me he understands the need to protest and march and hoped it continued to be peaceful. I think there's something to be gained in terms of people having this need to be cathartic about the frustration, the disappointment, or the anger they're feeling. Koval added he knows it will be a process for the department and the community to rebuild a trusting relationship. Now we have to redouble our efforts as if we weren't already trying to try to regain and restore some measure of reconciliation with those who feel disenfranchised 
with how this shooting has led to this outcome. And more than 25 were arrested this afternoon. Most will face a city fine of obstructing the roadway. One man, however, was arrested for having a rock in his hand. He will be facing additional charges. Reporting live in Madison, Lacey Chris, today's Team J4. And Crystal Lauer is at an area hospital recovering tonight. Her daughter tells me her mom has two angels watching out for her, Officer Gonzalez and her dog. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No. Glad I could help. This moment would not be possible without this guy. Good job. Good job. Good job. Officer Jeff Gonzalez was out on patrol early this morning when he saw a black lab running around. The dog obviously belonged to someone that had collars and tags. Gonzalez tried to catch the dog, but the dog kept running away. In a roundabout way, yeah, he sure did. He pointed me in the right direction. That direction to this porch where Crystal Lauer sat. She was wearing her pajamas and a house coat and uh, she was slumped over. I was obviously in some distress. She was unresponsive. Daughter Tyann went got the call that her mom had been out in three degree weather for about an hour. They thought that she was dead. So it was, it's hard. But thanks to man's best friend and Officer Gonzalez working together. It was a miracle. They were able to get Crystal to a hospital for help. Officer Gonzalez shrugs off being called a hero. A little uncomfortable with that, I guess, but just a bunch of circumstances that came together and that's my job. But adds. I thought it was neat, uh, the connection with the dog. You know, it was kind of a, like a lassie moment. We owe you a lot. Oh. And doctors don't know what caused Lauer to pass out. They're still doing tests, but Lauer says she can't wait to meet the officer who saved her. And Johnny, the dog, of course, has gotten a lot of extra treats today. Reporting live in Germantown, Lacey Chris, today's TMJ4. Six students at Whitnell Middle School are banding together to help a janitor who has cancer. They're going to hold a walk to raise money. Lacey Chris reports from Greenfield. Well, there's no doubt that this school has spirit. And when they found out one of their own was battling cancer, they decided to do everything they can to help him. What's up, guys? It doesn't take long to see how much Whitnell Middle School students love their janitor, Joe Lassiter. Joe is such a great help, and everyone in the school loves him, so we always want to, we want to see him get better. Last fall, Lassiter was diagnosed with stage 3 prostate cancer. I have cried here more than I have cried in my whole life because of the support. He started treatment in October and came back to quite a surprise. These kids made this side, this collage, helping hands for a helping man. The kids and staff didn't want to stop there. He's going through a lot and for him to keep that smile on his face and care about the kids as much as he does is it's exciting. For the past eight years, the school has hosted a walkathon to benefit different nonprofits. This year it's a little bit closer to home. The funds this year will go to the Cancer Center of America where Lassiter gets his treatments. The have kids come out of their box, more or less, to give me support, a custodian. Lassiter explains every day he feels better and better, and it's all thanks to the school. To have the school and the staff love and support. I don't, it's just hard to describe. 